I think we're going to be forced to examine ways in which we can change to adapt ourselves to the rest of the world, but hopefully retain the kinds of things we like about Vermont. I really think we have to have very high education standards. What are we planning for? Is it ultimately people? Environmental issues are important to most Vermonters just for different reasons. For more than a decade, the Vermont Council on Rural Development has been traveling across Vermont, visiting with local communities, and helping them tackle the tough issues at the local level. And through the community visit process, we are able to help residents identify their common goals and chart their course for the future. And we've said to ourselves, could this visioning process be used across the entire state of Vermont? The Council on the Future of Vermont project started with a simple idea. What do Vermonters want for their long-term future? Under the umbrella of the nonprofit, nonpartisan Vermont Council on Rural Development, the Council on the Future of Vermont devoted 18 months to an unprecedented and thorough process to answer that question. At significant moments in Vermont's history, similar efforts asked Vermonters to weigh in on the future. The questions engaged and united Vermonters, inspired leaders, and initiated practical statewide initiatives. Statewide conversations took place following the devastation of the 1927 flood, and again in the late 1960s, after the interstate highway brought big changes to the state. A generation later, in 1988, Governor Madeleine Kunin convened the Commission on Vermont's Future. These thorough explorations are a hallmark of the state of Vermont, and together these activities really present a unique viewpoint into the transitions we've taken as a state. Today Vermont is facing many of the same challenges reflected in the reports as far back as 1930, but there are also new issues. The Vermont Council on Rural Development felt that the time had come to ask Vermonters again. Are there values, concerns, challenges that we all share? The Council on the Future of Vermont includes 15 Vermonters from across the state, ranging in age, backgrounds, and professional experiences. Together, over a period of 18 months, they led an extraordinary effort to hear from as broad a range of Vermonters as possible. It's really great. We've heard from almost 4,000 Vermonters, and that includes people who have come to public forums or come out to focus groups. Um, it includes the people who've responded to surveys, either on the telephone or online, and then those Vermonters who wrote in online their ideas and opinions as well. We wanted to get ideas from people who don't normally have a voice in public policy. This included interviews with new immigrants, social service recipients, seniors, and young people. When we gave people an opportunity to look beyond those um, boundaries that they're, they're used to using, they have a lot to share. They're really comfortable, uh, really excited to talk about what uh, things might look like 10, 15, 20, 50 years down the road. Working with the Young Writers Project, we developed questions that prompted our students to write about their hopes and concerns for the future. 350 submitted essays that were both funny and brutally honest. We also received almost 1,500 responses when the Center for Rural Studies at the University of Vermont ran a poll for us by telephone and online. We were able to start this research with a series of values and a series of concerns that had already been identified by Vermonters around the state and what we were doing was validating those findings to make sure that they were indeed the way Vermonters felt. It was really important also to get research for this project. Uh, we worked with the Center for Social Science Research at St. Michael's College and asked them to put together really a book for us that overviewed historical trend lines in Vermont for the last 20 years. Public policy topics ranging from environment and culture uh, to education and the economy. It's a very good snapshot, or maybe a sort of a moving picture that covers several decades of exactly what Vermont looked like at the turn of the millennium. The council members sifted through all of these inputs, looked at them individually with our various perspectives, and then agreed on a common interpretation to report back to the people of Vermont. The findings are extraordinary. Vermonters feel an overwhelming sense of pride 
and connection to this place. And it's especially interesting that they feel that way now in the, in the face of some of perhaps the state's biggest challenges. I think that given um, a lot of the diversity in Vermont, just, you know, rural, urban, young, old, it surprised me just how much more in common we have as Vermonters than divide us. Across the state we heard many different opinions from both ends of the spectrum and yet uh, as we get to putting the pieces together I think we find that uh, uh, oftentimes we're able to uh, bridge the differences. The final report called Imagining Vermont Values and Vision for the Future was released in April 2009. There are three parts to this book. Part one introduces the project, has the common values we heard, and briefly summarizes the major concerns and challenges. Part two has the council's conclusions and reflections on the process. These are their best thoughts after 18 months of listening and are a call to action. And part three is the in-depth content. The chapters are organized by subject area. It'll be really important for Vermonters to get involved and read the report um, and think about the recommendations that are going to be made and um, understand that there's work ahead for us all to do. The findings in the summit on the future of Vermont mark the culmination of this work. Stakeholders, state leaders, community leaders from across the state will gather to discuss what the findings mean and how we move forward. Who in Vermont might be positioned and interested in pushing these ideas forward and how can they work with others to do that? The governor, legislators, and other key decision makers have the results of this process to use as they make decisions about priorities for the state. The VCRD will continue this conversation across the state of Vermont. We will share the findings and the excitement at the summit with every person in every community that we can possibly touch. Your voices and ideas, whether bold or reserved, have created this vision for Vermont. Now we look back to you to act on these findings and help us get closer to our vision for the place that we call home, Vermont.